The Miami Dolphins have already had a substantial impact on the 2021 NFL Draft and, after a pair of trades that changed the shape of the top 10, may have their pick of the best skill position talents in the first round. General Manager Chris Greer maintained his proficiency for setting up his franchise for the future when he dealt the third overall pick, acquired from the Houston Texans in the Laramie Tunsil trade, to the San Francisco 49ers for three first-round picks before using two, 2021 and 2022, to get back up to number six overall in a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. It means the Dolphins can go into the draft knowing they could land their top pass catcher if four quarterbacks come off the board in the top four and the Cincinnati Bengals take an offensive lineman at number five, and they have insurance with the 18th overall pick to address other areas. Few teams in the draft have more means by which to stack the deck in favor of their quarterback, and it is imperative Miami does that to put Tua Tungavailoa in the best situation to succeed in year two. Team needs. Wide receiver. The Dolphins added a deep threat coming off a career year in Will Fuller, who had 879 receiving yards and eight touchdowns for the Texans in 11 games last season. Relying on Fuller to stay healthy is an exercise in futility, though, and he will start 2021 with a four-game suspension. Miami must prioritize adding a more dependable rookie who can take some attention away from Devontae Parker, coming off a down year of 793 yards and four touchdowns, and give Tungavailoa a dynamic weapon, injecting some much-needed life into a passing game that was a disappointing 21st in adjusted net yards per pass attempt in 2020. Running back. Given the importance of the offensive line to a successful ground game, it can be tough to decipher whether it is the fault of the backs or those in the trenches when the rushing attack struggles to get going. In the case of the 2020 Dolphins, the numbers indicate it was both. Miami with in Football Outsiders adjusted line yards, which attributes responsibility for running back carries to the offensive line, and 26th in running back yards per carry. The case can be made that better backs and better run blockers are required for Miami. The Dolphins got value out of 7th round pick Miles Gaskin and undrafted free agent Salvin Ahmed last year, but an elite talent in the backfield could mask problems on the line. Edge rusher. The Dolphins' pressure rate of 24.8%, per pro football reference, was 11th in the NFL last season, and they hassled opposing quarterbacks consistently despite lacking a dominant edge rusher. Emmanuel Ogba will look to build on an impressive nine-sack season, but the Dolphins lost depth by trading Shaq Lawson to the Texans after one year. They should use day two to identify an edge who can be productive working in tandem with Ogba as a rookie and help the defense continue to provide strong support to Tungavailoa. First round targets. Devonta Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. Though LSU's Jamar Chase is often connected with the Dolphins as the potential answer at receiver, Smith boasts a skill set more deserving of being the sixth overall pick. Smith backed up a stunning 2019 with a Heisman Trophy winning 2020 and, though there are concerns over his slight frame, he does a better job of separating with his route running than Chase, is superior after the catch and has demonstrated a remarkable proclivity making highlight reel plays at the catch point. Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. Tight end might not be a need for the Dolphins, but Pitts as the top pass catcher in this class could take the Dolphins' offense to new heights. Dominant in the red zone and a significant downfield threat, Pitts can excel from every receiver position on day one. A much better blocker than he is given credit for, the Dolphins should have no qualms about playing him in line as a rookie. If the Dolphins truly want to help Tungavailoa take the next step, Pitts should be the pick at six. Najee Harris, running back, Alabama. There are three names in the hat for the top running back in the class, with Harris competing with Clemson's Travis Etienne and North Carolina's Javante Williams. Harris doesn't have the home run speed of Etienne, but he is still monstrously fast and athletic for a man of his 6 feet 2 inches and 230 pound frame and can immediately become an every down back with his skills as a pass catcher and in pass protection. Later round targets. Jason Owe, edge rusher, Penn State. An incredible physical specimen whose pro day earned him a relative athletic score of 9.92 out of 10, production is the biggest question surrounding Owe. He did not have a sack in 2020 but his freakish athleticism makes him a good fit as a developmental outside linebacker whom the Dolphins could use exclusively on third down early in his career and allow him to wreak havoc with his length, explosiveness and flexibility. Trey Sermon, 
running back, Ohio State. A transfer from Oklahoma to Ohio State who never logged 200 carries in a season, the lack of tread on the tires is a plus for Sermon, who has the size to hold up as an every-down back. Sermon possesses excellent burst, lateral quickness and contact balance. He's not as complete as Harris, but Sermon can survive in pass protection and his room to grow back is exciting. Amon Raw Street Brown, wide receiver, USC. Consistently productive throughout his career with the Trojans, St. Brown is an impressively agile root runner who can make plays at every level and excel in contested catch situations, adding St. Brown to an offense with Pitts and Parker would be a dream for the Dolphins. Best case scenario. The Dolphins have done an excellent job of acquiring capital, but if they are to realize their potential in the immediate future, they need to hit on offensive picks in this draft. No player would do more to jumpstart the Dolphins' offense than Pitts, whom they should not hesitate to pick if he six. The ideal turn of events thereafter is that Minnesota's Rashad Bateman is on the board at number 18 to give them a number one wideout. Should that scenario play out, Miami can focus on adding a running back and an edge on day two and prime Tungavailoa for a year two leap.